Rinpoche was always surrounded by people. They asked for his advice, blessing, or support. It happened that sometimes refugees from Tibet came to him without money and unable to speak Nepalese. He never refused to help anyone. Lopantsetsu Rinpoche was versed in all the Buddhist teachings, in philosophy, logic, and cosmology. He was able to explain the most intricate aspects of the teachings. If there was a drought in the valley, then Rinpoche came alone to the Nagarjuna hill in order to hold a special ritual. He would meditate until the rain started. It was only at 86 that we really discovered that we could take him to the West. The West met the Lama with great interest and trust. Once, when Rinpoche was flying to Venezuela with a group of friends, the plane crew asked him for a Buddhist refuge. Right in the air, at an altitude of 10,000 meters above the Atlantic, the whole crew was lined up near the cockpit, repeating the traditional formula. I take refuge in the Buddha in his teachings and in the friends on the way. From the time of the Buddha, everyone who has taken refuge has stepped onto the path of realizing the true nature of mind. In Buddhism, refuge is explained as a system of values, the most important of which is the limitless space of mind itself where all phenomena, thoughts and feelings appear, change constantly and disappear again. Well, he came right into the family. We gave him the whole company. When he came, we said, you are our teacher, and that means you're also the teacher of our students, right? By that time, Oli Nido had become one of the first fully qualified Western Buddhist lamas of Karmakaju tradition. Upon the request of His Holiness Karmapa, Oli and Hana founded dozens of Diamond Way Buddhist centers of the Karmakaju lineage around the world where Lopen Tsechu Rinpoche used to come and give traditional Buddhist teachings. Maggie Leonard, who became his indispensable helper, Hana Nido, who translated his teachings from Tibetan, and Pedro Gomez, who runs the Carmagin Meditation Center in Spain. According to a prophecy of the Inca tradition, it was written in their books. One of their brothers would come from another part of the world and change that, what they called consciousness. It would be the first contact of the two brothers, and it would be a certain lama from the city of Lhasa. During the time of his visit to Cusco, the ancient capital of Incas, the two main holders of the Inca tradition came down to take refuge from Rinpoche and to hold a ceremony of exchanging their highest knowledge. <laughs> Oh, 
Rinpoche noticed that one of the caves in the outskirts of Cusco looked very similar to the cave of Padmasambhava in Bhutan. He was sure that in ancient times, yogis from the Himalayas who could fly used to come there and give teachings. Therefore, there was this prophecy in the books of the Incas. In Buddhism, unusual powers such as Levitation and controlling the elements of nature are developed due to meditation. Padmasambhava, or Guru Rinpoche, was one of the greatest Indian yogis. He brought Buddhism to Tibet and Bhutan in the 8th century. Most valuable here is a Guru Rinpoche statue, which one says has the quality of speaking. The story says that once it was decided to take the statue away from this old Lakang and to transport it to another place, and then the statue itself said it doesn't want to be taken away, it wants to remain here. So it has uh, been again put on its original place. And here uh, we have old paintings on the walls. We have a beautiful mandala on the ceiling of the Buddha of Long Life, Amitayus. We have also the three long life aspects, the Buddha Amitayus, Namgyalma and White Tara. We have also Guru Rinpoche together with his two main consorts, Yishit Sogyal and Mandarava. The famous Tiger's Nest Monastery in Bhutan is named this way, marking the time when Guru Rinpoche flew there riding a white tigress, which his consort Yeshe Tsogyal had transformed into. Through the power of their meditation, they pacified the local demons. Then they taught Buddhism for many years. Guru Rinpoche brought to Bhutan not a monastic Buddhism, but a yogi tradition, Tantra. Yogis and yoginis lived in the woods and caves. They wandered from place to place, maintaining a free way of life, 
which was not limited by usual norms of behavior. Their only commitment was to keep the continuity of meditation and pure view. During his whole life, Lopin Tsetsu Rinpoche kept a connection to Guru Rinpoche and transmitted his blessing to others. The monastery is nested in a cleft above a precipice situated almost one kilometer high above the valley. One can get there only by a narrow twisting path. It appears that in this place, the laws of gravity do not function. I think he was an emanation of Guru Rinpoche. He didn't want to say that he was incarnate, but I'm sure he was incarnate. There's absolutely no doubt. First, the name Tsitchu, it means 10th day. And 10th day, that's the day of Guru Rinpoche. Then his different qualities were like that. And more than that, when he died, he died on the 10th day again, right, of the month. So I see no doubt, I have no doubt that, that he was uh, an emanation of Guru Rinpoche. and so on, and I've seen many cases his wishes being fulfilled and so on, but we always talk about two kinds of miracles. We have the ordinary miracles, and the ordinary miracles are actually when you lift things in the air or make things happen that aren't possible, or you appear in two places at the same time, you know, or all these different things that can happen, and, and that was also known by Lopin Sitchin, that he actually did that or that he just disappeared from rooms, he just wasn't there, right? And a while after he was there again, and he didn't come and he didn't go, you know, I mean, these kinds of things, I mean, many stories about that. And we also, Hannah and I saw, really what he did as being magic. But the really important, the really important uh, powers is not playing with the laws of nature. That's not so special, you know. The really important powers is you're able to touch people's hearts, and you're able to take them from suffering to joy, from black thoughts to white thoughts, from, from pain to happiness and so on. This is a really important thing. And there he touched everybody. Those miracles he made every day. Wherever he was, you know, he was just so extraordinary. He was really like our father.